All right, in this video, we're going to talk about one of the conic sections, specifically uh, the ellipse. So let's take a look at one. Um, there you go. Prior to learning about an ellipse, you might have thought of this as an oval. Uh, we're going to learn some geometric properties of it and uh, how to graph it specifically is going to be our focus here, really. Um, so every ellipse has a center, and the center is always uh, in the center, and it's denoted by h comma k. So the x coordinate is going to be h, and the y coordinate is going to be k. Um, you'll notice that there, if we put a horizontal line and a vertical line through the center, uh, in one direction the ellipse is a little bit fatter. Uh, in that direction, what we're going to get are called the vertices. So the points that are on the ellipse that are horizontal in this case, or in the, in the fatter direction, are called the vertices. Um, and the distance from a vertex to the center is denoted by A. Okay, so we're going to talk about three different uh, distances, and we're going to denote them by A, B, and C. And the first one is A. That's between the center and the vertex. It's the biggest. Uh, the distance to A actually has a special name. It's called the major axis. Major because it's bigger than the other one. Um, so what you might think is, well, what if we go perpendicular to the major axis through the center? Well, we get another thing that's called an axis, and in this case, it'll be called the minor axis. And the endpoints of that are going to be called covertices. So if we move in that direction, and if we move up or down, uh, we're going to get a covertex, and the covertex is a distance of B units from the center. So we can move up B, we move down B, um, and 2B is going to be called the minor axis. So we have a uh, minor axis. So along the major axis, there are two additional points, and I'm not going to graph them uh, accurately, unfortunately, but they're called the foci. So if I plot them, they're always along the major axis. Um, they're always inside of the ellipse, and they are a distance of two, uh, sorry, of C units from the center. Okay, so we have A, B, and C. The relationship between A, B, and C is uh, given by this formula, C squared equals A squared minus B squared. Almost like the Pythagorean theorem, but not like the Pythagorean theorem, uh, in that there's a minus sign there. Okay, so that's a bunch of stuff so far. There's two additional things I want to talk about. First one is the area of an ellipse. It's a, a pretty easy formula. It's pi times AB. Uh, if you think about a circle as being kind of a special case of an ellipse, which it's not, but if you thought of it that way, or well, it kind of is that, actually, um, then A and B would be equal to each other, so their area would be pi times A times A, or pi A squared, and if A is the radius, then you get pi r squared, so that's kind of a consistency there, which is nice. Um, another thing we're going to talk about is called eccentricity. So the eccentricity of an ellipse is kind of, in some ways, how close to a circle is it? So the eccentricity is going to vary between 0 and 1. Uh, the closer it is to 0, the more the ellipse will look like a circle. The closer it is to 1, the uh, kind of fatter or more elongated it will get. Okay, so let's talk equations. So there's two different equations that we can get, one for a horizontal major axis, and the other, of course, will be for a uh, vertical major axis. So for horizontal, take a look at this. We get x minus h squared over a squared, and then plus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. So it's always going to equal 1 when it's in this form. Um, and what's important is that a squared is underneath x, so it's going to be fat in the x direction, or it's going to have a horizontal major axis. Um, but I tend to think of it as just fat in the x direction. And um, a little picture could look like this. So 2a, there's your major axis. We could also have a vertical major axis. So if we have a vertical major axis, the only difference in the equation is going to be the location of a squared and b squared. So in this case, b squared comes first. A squared is underneath the uh, y minus k squared term, uh, and that means it's going to be fat or elongated in the y direction. Still equals 1. Um, here's a little picture. So we get that. And then don't forget, uh, or maybe uh, I didn't point it out yet, but A is always going to be greater than B, uh, which is how you get a major axis when you do 2A versus 2B. And also, we can always find C squared by doing A squared minus B squared. All right, so uh, before I go on this video, I'm going to do one example of graphing an ellipse and kind of finding everything. So let's say we have x minus 6 squared over 9 minus the quantity y plus 2 squared over 25 equals 1. Okay, so first thing I need to do is I need to figure out um, a, b, and c. So a is going to be greater than b, which means that uh, you know 3 squared is 9, 5 squared is 25, so a must be equal to 5, and b must be equal to 3. I'm also going to calculate c. I know that c squared 
is equal to a squared minus b squared. So c squared is going to be 25 minus 9. Um, or c is going to be 4 because c squared is 16. Um, so I have that. And then also you can identify the center just by looking. So the center in this case is going to be the quantity uh, 6, negative 2, or the ordered pair 6, negative 2. Not really a quantity. Well, it's a quantity, but whatever. Okay, um, let me set up my graph. So I need to be able to plot 6, negative 2. I need to be able to go uh, 5 up and down because uh, 25 is under the y term. I need to be able to go 3 left and right because 9 is underneath the uh, x term there. So let me plot the center, which is 6, negative 2. And then since A is underneath the Y term, I'm going to go up 5 and down 5 to get my vertices. So there's one, and then down 5 is the other. Uh, now I'm going to move 3 units in either direction from the center to get the co-vertices. So 3 to the right, 3 to the left, and I can draw my ellipse. I also want to plot the foci. The foci don't have much to do with graphing, um, but geometrically the definition of an ellipse has a lot to do with the foci. Uh, but we're not talking about that in this video, but uh, at some point we will. Uh, so I just plot the foci, and now what I'm going to do is uh, kind of list everything. So I like to list uh, seven things for an ellipse. One of those things is the center, which I've already identified. Uh, one of those things is the vertices. So for the vertices in this case, it's going to be 6, and then negative 2 plus or minus 5. I usually write them like that. It's kind of obnoxious, uh, but it's really easy. The co-vertices are going to be located at um, the ordered pairs 6, plus or minus 3, comma negative 2. So you're moving left and right in this case, which is why it's plus or minus to the x-coordinate, versus the vertices where you're moving uh, up and down, which is why it was plus or minus to the y-coordinate. Uh, the foci are along the major axis, so we're going to go uh, 6, comma negative 2, plus or minus 4. I want to find, so that's uh, center, vertices, co-vertices, foci, that's four things. I consider the equation one thing, so that's five things. Uh, I also like to find the area, which is going to be pi times a times b. So pi times 5 times 3, or 15 pi. And I like to find the eccentricity. So eccentricity is c over a. Remember, it's a measure of just how circular this thing is. The closer this number is to 0, the more like a circle. You can look at it. It's not very much like a circle, so I'd expect it to be a little bit closer to 1. Um, and c over a, in this case, is 4 over 5. So that's seven things that we've listed. Um, that's how you can graph an ellipse from the equation. And I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.